My name is La Hela. I am the co-founder and lead alele for Kamamalula News. You can check us out on kamamalula.com or look up hashtag Hawaiian Press and all the different social media. Uh, we're there. Even the newest one, IGTV. Now, I was asked, what does sovereignty mean to me? I think first, personally, sovereignty itself is that you have the ability uh, to make your own decisions, to make your own choices, regard regardless of whatever those choices may be, whether it's it's for ill or it's for good or it's it's whatever it might be, uh, that you have that sovereignty over yourself, and you're not being dictated to from some outside force that thinks they know better. Now, that is a huge issue here in Hawaii, especially when you look at this question in context of this month, because we have La Ho'i Ho'i Ea, which I think it translates to Restoration Day in English, and it's a Hawaiian holiday. Before I go kind of deeper into the context of that, I think that for me, when I look at sovereignty here in Hawaii, I am a Kanaka Maoli part of the indigenous population here. But Hawaiian is a nationality. And when I think of sovereignty, I don't think of, oh, just my group. That is a, that's not culturally who we are. That's a very American way of thinking that um, we say the plantation owner, how they would put people into their own camps based upon um, ethnicity or race. And that's not who we are culturally as Kanaka Maoli. Um, and so when I look at sovereignty, I look at it for all of us, for all of our citizens, because it's not just Kanaka Maoli that have suffered. It's all of our citizens that have suffered, that continue to suffer. You know, we look at um, the continued decline of actual citizens from our country as staying here in our country being forced out and supplanted. I mean, this is colonization 101, you know, whether it's, you know, back in the day, uh, the British Empire uh, in Jamaica or in India, you know, supplanting the local population is just part of that. And we have so many who are economic refugees in other countries, whether they're living in Mokuhonu um, or Turtle Island, so up in the mainland US, or even like myself, I almost didn't come back home. You know, I, I lived in Japan for close to 10 years um, because they had all of the things that a civilized country should have, which honestly, based on our own history and what we were doing uh, in the 1800s in the kingdom, we would have now today um, national health care, for example. You know, we, we started that with Queen Emma. In 1851, you've got the Department of Health, and then you have... Um, you know, Queen's Hospital, which was paid for by taxes on the foreign goods that would come in, and it was a free hospital for our local population. And so you're looking into Kamehameha III, uh, which La Ho'i Ho'i'ea involves him. Uh, you know, the Restoration Day and all of that, he bought in compulsory education, so incredibly high literacy rates. We're talking 92 or 94 percent. And so education being valued, health of your citizens being valued, everyone across the board lost because we could no longer make those decisions for ourselves in our own country. And so that's, when I, that's why I say, you know, Hawaiian, it's a nationality. It's about all of our citizens and getting out of this illegal occupation by the U.S., not just on principle or on past echoes of loss, but because it continues today, our citizens continue to suffer. I mean, I, I mentioned I, had, I lived in Japan for almost 10 years. There are hundreds of thousands of Kanaka Maoli, just counting the Kanaka Maoli, not even counting all the rest of our citizens who are not Kanaka Maoli, you know, that live 
either in the mainland US or they live in Europe or they live in England or some other country because they've been pushed out and supplanted here in their own country. I mean, I think I do see a shift, people coming, trying to come back home like how I have, but it is not easy. There are systems in place to degrade your opportunities as compared to American citizens that would come here. And so I think looking in the context also of Laho'iho'i'ea, which Restoration Day, uh, Lord George Paulette came here, held Hawaii hostage with all, you know, all the cannons on his boats and everything like that. Um, he had no authority to do that. And when England found out, they sent you know, um, Admiral Thomas. And that's why we have Thomas Square downtown, which most people don't even realize. Um, and, and now the occupational government here um, are also changing uh, a lot of our, our locations. Thomas Square is an example of that. But that's where you also get the famous phrase, ua mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono. And the occupational government here changed that to mean the life of the land. Mind you, now this was our, our I guess, slogan or, or saying for our country. And they changed it and also banned um, the major language here, which was Hawaiian, obviously, because it's Hawaii. And so no one could really contest it. They changed ua mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono to the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness, which is a complete crock. Contextually, it's what King Kamehameha III, Kaui Oli, said after Admiral Thomas got here to Hawaii, kicked out Paulette, and the British government restored everything back to Hawaii and our government, because that was what that's what you do. There are allies. You're not supposed to be attacking your allies or occupying your allies. And so that famous line from his speech that he gives became the saying of our country. And what it contextually meant is the sovereignty of our nation is perpetuated through righteousness, through righteous acts like that. And so you really have to ask yourself so many terrible things have happened here and so it's not a surprise when it has decreased our sovereignty whether that's food sovereignty being able to feed ourselves so many businesses have either been shut down or pushed out even on the occupational government level nonsensically it doesn't even make sense why would you set up an island that's in the middle of the ocean to go from 90 percent uh you know on efficiency, feeding its citizens, clothing its citizens, etc., to only about two or three percent of all food is from Hawaii. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, just on a on a governmental level. But if you look at it as an occupation and a colonialist government trying to wear people down, it makes perfect sense. And it didn't happen overnight. You know, all of this takes time and getting people used to two things so I think I mean I've probably spent a long time talking about this longer than most people will watch but I really wanted to answer this question as best as possible because when it comes to sovereignty when it comes to la ho'ehoe'ea when it comes to our citizens it's about making choices that can help us but you can't do that until you have freedom and sovereignty an agency over yourself to make those choices, to make those changes, to do um, repair. Repair. We, if you look at Hawaii now, we are in a state of emergency. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Not just economic state of emergency, but the f the lack of food, the lack of farms, the lack of actual uh, labor beyond the help or the entertainment. You know, um, so I really think that sovereignty for me is a very complex system that needs to be approached and you have to have a plan. Anybody can say, oh, free Hawaii now. Or, yeah, you know, oh, this damn U.S. It, we, so what? What are you going to do about it? What is the plan? So I hope that that elucidates a little bit better 
what I feel sovereignty means, especially in the context of this month with the Ho'i Ho'i Ea. Aloha.